City believes in the doers, the makers, the movers, and companies like Veeam who process their international payments simply and securely, helping them build their businesses around the world. To do this, Veeam needed a bank like City with global scale and networks in 160 markets. So more doers everywhere can do what they do best. For the love of moving businesses forward, for the love of progress, City. Welcome to the Paley Fest Fall TV Previews. I'm George Pinocchio, the entertainment reporter for ABC7 here in Los Angeles, and I am delighted to host this conversation celebrating ABC's Dancing with the Stars. We also want to say thank you to our official card and official sponsor, that city, for helping make this event possible. Now, Dancing with the Stars is no stranger to breaking cultural boundaries and perpetuating the cultural zeitgeist so it seems fitting that it is now the first series to simulcast on ABC and on Disney+. Plus. So it's making it even more accessible to fans than ever before. And as many of you know, I've covered this show since season one, and I'm always surprised at what happens every season that keeps me coming back for more. So I can't wait to see what season 32 has in store. And with that, let's introduce today's special guest. We have the showrunner of Dancing with the Stars and the executive producer, Conrad Green. Hi, Conrad. Hi. We've also got the judges, you know them very well, Carrie Ann Inaba, Bruno Tonioli, and Derek Huff. And we've got this season's co-host, Alfonso Rivero, and coming back to the ballroom, Julianne Huff. Yay! Everyone. Yay! I could start with any of you because I've been talking to you for seasons, but I'm going to go right to the boss. Conrad, you're coming back to ABC this fall. You need to get those viewers immediately um, making this must-see TV. What is it about the new season of Dancing with the Stars that is going to make people tune in just because? We're going to put on the best show on television. You know, it's a <laughs> show. We're putting on a show and it's live. Um and it's uh, easy to underestimate the power of live television, the excitement it brings. There's a certain fission that comes with knowing that what's happening in front of you is really happening right now and anything could happen. Um, there's an energy to this show. And what's great is, you know, the last time this show was on ABC, we were still in the middle of COVID protocols and everything felt a little bit, you know, the audience wasn't in the room. Everyone was spaced apart. We're back in the in the original world now, so we can get our audience back. We can get that feeling back. We can get that excitement and buzz that comes with having the biggest live show on television. You know, the whole industry, as we know at the moment, is in a state of flux and change. And so it's really helpful for us, I think, to be able to be wherever the audience can find us, right? Because people are used to watching TV in such different ways now compared to when we first came on air, you know, almost 20 years ago. And so you have to make yourself available to the audience, right? And so many people just watch on streaming. Some people are now used to watching on Hulu. So to be available on network TV with ABC, then Disney Plus, and on Hulu as well, we've covered all the bases. Like, no one will not be able to watch us now. And that's what we really want. You know, it's such an inclusive show. And it's a show that people have grown so fond of that we want everybody to be able to access it. And we want to bring the good times back, basically. Well said. I think about um, when I'm going to talk to the, the host right now, that this show can really be career changing for the people who dance. I look at Gilles Marini, who got all sorts of acting gigs after this. I look at Mario Lopez, who turned to a career in broadcasting. I look to Alfonso Rivero, who was an actor, a game show host, a contestant, a co-host. Here you are on this show. You love this place. Why do you love Dancing with the Stars? And how has it changed your life? Well, I mean, it it starts with the people, right? It starts, it always, to me, it's the people that are there. The the judges that have been there and Derek came on as, an, as a judge. Um, we're, we're all going to miss Len incredibly this season. Um, but the people that are there, the love affair that that they have with this show, uh, Carrie Ann always says it best that it's such a family. And once you're part of the family, you are part of this family forever. And I, I absolutely felt it from the beginning. But what's crazy is I felt it as a fan of the show, sitting in the audience, watching friends 
come on the show. And it was always felt so warm and welcoming to be able to come and hang out in a ballroom year after year, always begging Dina Katz to get me on. And, <laughs> and please, please, I want to do this. I want to do this. Um, that, you know, I became in love with all of the people. And, you know, uh, last season I got the opportunity to work with Conrad for the first time and just the, the best executive producer, showrunner in the business. So wonderful. I love it. And in terms of my career, um, weirdly enough, um, it's like act two in my career. is so much better than act one because of Dancing with the Stars. It gave me an opportunity to show people that I wasn't that character that everybody knew me as and let them know that this is me. This is, my, this is what I feel. This is my heart, sending my heart out to the world. And um, it, obviously it brought me America's Funniest Home Videos. Um, I came back different times to either guest judge or I stepped in for Tom one time as a, as a host of the show and doing little numbers, but I always just loved being there. Um, and so now last season, obviously coming back and co-hosting and being up in the skybox with all the dancers and all the celebrities uh, was so much fun for me. Um, and now this season to be moved down kind of onto the floor is quote unquote MC. And I'm so excited to have my girl Julianne up there with me. Uh, it's going to be one incredible season. I think our vibe is going to be uh, just so good. Very good. And, you know, maybe Carrie Ann was right when she talked about it being family. She's willed Julianne Huff back into the ballroom <laughs> with an interesting perspective because she's been a pro on the show. She's been a judge on the show. Now she's going to be asking the questions that she's been asked herself. So now I'm wondering, Julianne, if you have a little spin that will maybe surprise some of these people that you will be questioning after they dance. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'm so happy to be back. And yes, sister, um, my family, but Conrad, I mean, this is this has been a relationship that has been going on since I was 18. I'm 35 now. So uh, the thing that's wild about this show is that I grew up on this show with all the people watching the show. So there is a level of not just the family that's on the inside, but everybody who's been watching this show for so many years generationally um it, it it really truly just feels like we're just you know life is about change and everything and now like you get to come back over and over again reinvent yourself in different ways so the fact that i get to come home and and obviously be with you george like this has been great too um it's been incredible so i think to answer your question I, I feel so grateful that I've had an opportunity to play a, a role, a different role, every time I've been a part of this show and to have the experience of what it feels like to be a, a pro and a dancer, you know, going through the experiences of training and working hard, the evolution, what happens um, through learning how to dance, through the emotional process, as well as, you know, being a judge, what we're looking for. And so my goal for this, this beautiful new chapter is to hopefully create a space and an environment in the skybox with these couples that they feel so comfortable. They feel so safe. They feel so expressed. They're having so much fun and they feel so supported uh, knowing that like I have their back, Alfonso has their back. Like we've been there. We've, We've gone through the experiences and um, we're rooting for them, you know? And I think that like, you know, obviously I'm, I'm not judging this season, but like if I can help with little tips here and there, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I am, I am your wing woman. Let's do this. So, um, so, so yeah, I'm, um, I'm like, I'm ready. Like I'm, I'm so excited to just be part of this, this monumental life-changing experience. Not that only for myself that it has changed my life, but for everybody who joins the show, I mean, Alfonso, you just said it. It's like, this has opened up so much life and energy and expression for so many people. And um, I'm, I'm so excited about the cast and like who's gonna be joining because again, like the, the, it, every year just gets better and better and better and people are so invested and the, the level of, um, you know, commitment from the fans, I, I think is really a testament. I mean, my favorite moments of life are when I meet people and they share, you know, 
my my mom passed away or my grandma passed away but this was the show that like when we when we think about our memories together this is what we remember and like you have been a part of that and so you know all of us as much as we obviously want to offer the show what the show has been able to give back to so many people is more than more than you could ever hope for is that we get to be a part of people's lives and they get to be a part of ours and it's just such a joy I love it. Nice answer. All right, let's get to the esteemed judges here. Okay, <laughs> Bruno, Carrie Ann, you've been oh. since the beginning. People show up, they have a different level of dance experience. It's always different from not much to a decent amount to great improvements <laughs> along the way. And somehow, Bruno, there's always a hot mess. And we love the hot mess. <laughs> I do like the hot mess <laughs> and root for that person. Of course, but it's he, he, like our show represents everything. It's life. You get everything is li in life. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. You can be as entertaining. Sometimes you're so bad that you're actually good. And, <laughs> and those things are like, you know, there are some moments that you, you could not recreate. And But you have to give them a chance. And there are some people, actually, I have to be honest that start off not quite so, you know, you think of, God, how is this going to go? But when they apply themselves, you know, over the journey, because, you know, this is a marathon, it's not like a sprint. <coughs> they, they listen to what we say, they work with their partner, they actually get much better. They learn a lot out of it. They may not win, but they get a huge, huge, huge input. Not just how to dance, but how to be a performer, how to connect with the audience, how to approach many other things, you know, is is a is a much bigger than just doing steps. That through the stuff, really, is, uh, for me, is a complete experience. I've been doing this for I, can't, I lost count, okay. but <laughs> for me, every time it really is discovering something new. I'm going there like a kid that has never seen anything, and I'm totally totally involved in every show it feels to me like the first one because there is always something that surprises me that excites me that gives me faith in our industry i wouldn't do it if i didn't like it and every single season look i got goosebumps something happens that really says this is good this show really is good it, it inspires people it draws people together you, you, it entertains, but sometimes it gives you insight in many other aspects of, of this industry that I find very, very inspiring. That's really what is the world. I wouldn't be able to do what I do if I didn't, if they didn't give me that, and they all do. And it is not just the dancers. I mean, I'm talking about the whole production team. Everybody loves the show. Everybody puts in a hundred and ten percent to the people that put your that get the socks together, the lighting guy, hair and makeup, the grips, the camera crew. Everybody approaches it uh, with a total commitment, and I guarantee you that it is. It, that's why you can do it, and you can when you something like that happen, you have to give. 110%, and we always do, and it always happens. And everything, as, as Juliana said, gets better. Because I say, okay, what's gonna happen now? I've seen it all, I've seen thousands of dances, and yet, here we go. They give me something that says, yes, damn it, we are in it. <laughs> and I have not, no, it's true, you know, I'm not mucking about it. It's true, it's true. It, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. And I know it's going to be even better this season because it always is and even more exciting because all now that we have Alfonso and Julian, the family, it, it's, a, it's like, I'm sorry, but it's, it's a bit like the, I feel like the godfather now. <laughs> <laughs> but it really is like, you know, you, you feel you're all together and we're all going to go out there and smash it. I can't wait to have Bruno, you know, sharing that space with me. Oh, cause... I can't wait to have you next week. Oh, but Lord. There's, there's a danger. Oh, <laughs> like, you know, with me, there is always a slight edge. <laughs> I can catch you, brother. I'll, I can catch you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, don't mind, I, don't mind, I don't mind if you, if you slap me, darling. You know? All it's right. Also, so... 
Oh, <laughs> Carrie Ann, one of the things that I noticed about you and since the very beginning of this show is that you wear your emotions on your sleeve. You know, if you've got sleeves in some of those sexy gowns that you show up in, but you, we know how you feel. We know when you are touched. We know when you're disappointed. Now, let me ask you this question. Is it a badge of honor when you tell somebody they didn't meet the expectation that you expected and you hear the boos from the audience? Is that a badge of honor? Because you've got, you know, you're a little bit steely when you need to be. Well, you know, I think the beauty of our show is that people come out there and they're willing to risk everything, right, to, to dance in front of us. And it's, it's an honor that I think all of us appreciate as judges. But I have to tell them the truth because the truth is the only way they're going to improve. And I think that the booze, it's part of the show. It's yeah, that the our booze. audience is invested and that they love what's going on. And to me, it's always like it, it fills my heart inside. I always giggle like. If I ever got a boo, or if any of us got a boo, right? Len, Bruno, and I, from day one, oh. always give each other a little high five. They love it. They love what's happening so much that they have an opinion. And that is the beauty of our show. It's inclusive. Yeah. Everybody's involved. You know, and like, that's what's also great about our show is that we put up the paddles, sure. We're one of the only shows that actually the judges put something on the line, right? We score, but it really is a joint decision between us the studio audience and the people at home, how these people do on our show. So, you know, we're just one part of the equation, but it's it's always important to tell them the truth because nobody can improve until you tell you them what's right. really happening. Plus yeah. everybody at home saw it. I don't want them to walk away thinking one thing, but, but George, to your point, one thing is that it is kind of the hardest part too, because it it's really hard to tell somebody that they weren't as good as they thought. It's heartbreaking, but, that's you have to break the illusion so that they can move through and go to the truth and evolve because the show is about evolving. We want people to, like Julianne said, to evolve after they've been on our show. Maybe take home the Mirrorball trophy, right? So I get that's it. Only, that's only a little bit of the problem. <laughs> so <laughs> one of the things that Derek does sometimes is give encouragement when he sees some improvement, just like the, the two other judges do. But Derek, I think you're the one who needs encouragement this season because your schedule is nuts. Oh. So why don't you tell people what you're doing this fall besides Dancing with the Stars? Uh, well, you know, I always like the phrase, um, if you need something done, give it to somebody that's busy. So uh, <laughs> I've, just, I've really taken that on a lot. But no, I'm going to be going on a national tour, um, hitting 59 cities and being, I'm being on Dancing with the Stars. Um, but can I just mention real fast that... Can I can I get away from Julianne at some point? Oh, my gosh. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, you know... For the almighty. Just paving the way for you, D. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Um, but no, it's going to be a crazy season, uh, a crazy time. But in the past, I, I've really thrived in those situations when it's been really busy and, and moving around. And for me, it's all about momentum. You know, for me, if I'm doing something, it just feeds into the other project and that project feeds into that. It all just feeds each other in, in a beautiful sort of momentous energy if you will um but the, to be honest with you again just to echo everything that everybody else said um you know i get really emotional i get really i get goosebumps i get just all these waves of gratitude about this show it really is the gift that keeps on giving um you know to think that we're still here and not just here but we're thriving in this beautiful show and it, it just it's just a beautiful beautiful um experience that the audience experiences we experience, but also the contestants who come on the show and Alfonso can attest to this. My favorite part about it is, is it's, and I think what makes this show so unique and so special is because it's really putting people in this position that's really forcing them to kind of uh, discover parts of themselves they haven't discovered before or to reclaim parts of themselves that they've lost. And to have that sort of happen before your eyes it's, it really is much more than just a, a, a sparkly, fun, exciting show, which it is all those things. But there's something like that the human experience is like, it's in there that we're all, we all sort of, um, we all feel and we all sort of, uh, we relate to. And, and it's draped in, it's draped in rhinestones beautifully. <laughs> it's that storytelling that makes it such a powerful show. Yes. You know, it's that combination of spectacular performance. We can all sit back and watch that, but it's following and tracking 
real people learning something that's really difficult. Um, and, you know, you get emotional moments like we had last season with Selma, where, you know, her whole uh, journey through the show. It's just incredible to watch, you know, and every season. Yes. Yes, this might be our 32nd season, but every human being is a different story. Everyone has yes. a slightly different challenge. Everyone has highs and lows. And so being able to follow that process, I just think is powerful television. And it's, you know, storytelling at its simplest in some ways. You've come up with themes that people really like. Is there a new theme week this season that you might oh. want to reveal now, Conrad? Anything, Conrad? Um, we can't. Oh. There are some, there are, we've got a lot of really good themes. We've got some spectacular um, artist-based nights about their, around their music, which we'll be announcing very soon. Ooh. We're going to have um, Disney's 100th anniversary uh, celebration Ooh. this year, which is going to, so we'll be tracking all of the 100 years of uh, music from Disney, right from the earliest days right through to now. And, and that show actually falls, I think, a day after the formation of the Disney company 100 years ago. So wow. that's going to be spectacular. We've got a lot of great things up our sleeve, and we'll be announcing those very soon. Awesome. Let me um, answer the question I'm about to ask you. I would say the answer is Florence Henderson, Cloris Leachman, for oh. a lot of reasons. But I enjoyed watching them dance. I enjoyed seeing some of those older folks get on the stage and give it all they had. Tell me who some of your favorite teams have been to watch over the past 31 seasons. Let's begin with Bruno. Oh, I mean, you just said Cloris. She nearly killed me. Do you remember when she, when I made a comment about leg placement, she came to the desk. I can't do it because I have no pants, but she let, she put, did you remember guys, when she put the leg on the desk, she <laughs> I, I mean that. I mean she. You just said it, Cloris. Just G. I mean, you I know mean, she's a comic genius anyway. But she yeah. actually, she took. She knew. You know, she's a she's a she's a professional. She knew what she was doing, and she used what she had to the best possible effect. You don't have to be twelve and have your legs around your ears to give a good performance. You know, everybody can do it if they are smart and they use their best abilities, it creates an impression, it's brilliant, and Florence was one of them. Oh, oh. Shant, oh, remember, Shantala on Halloween last season. Yeah. Yeah. That was, talk about a performance. That was a whole movie. <laughs> I mean, there are so many moments. I mean, it was, I think it was a full, a full hammer horror movie. But Shantala is one of those great examples of somebody who the show made a real difference in the life oh, of this cool. performance. Which I really like seeing. But she worked very, very hard. You know, right. you know, it doesn't come by magic. If you put the work into it, you listen to your pros are the best, you know, they're brilliant. Work with them, listen to the judges, apply yourself. Things happen. Jamal, uh, two, two seasons ago, he started a little bit, okay, we knew he had abilities. There is something there. He listened to what we said. The next week, it was fixed. The following week, it was better. Well, and then it works out. They work out a routine that was absolutely insane. So that, you know, it, it, everybody really, if you work at it, you can get there. Was that Iman you were talking about? Yes. Uh, Iman Schumpert, uh, yeah, he was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Halloween, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> but, you mean, but you yeah. remember the journey, because we really said, you, your arms are not working, work on that. He came back, he did it. Your feet are, are like flippers. Work on it. He did. And you it know, just goes better and better and better and better. One Brilliant. thing I want to think about the people that come on our show and, and leave memorable performances is for, I think, each one of us, it'll be different. And just like everybody at home, because we're all touched and moved by different things. And I think that's what makes our show so incredible. Like for me, the people, when people ask like, who stands out? Well, for what reason? Because there's a whole list on each reason. Like mm -hmm. I remember Amy, you know, she just stands out. And Meryl mm -hmm. and Max, they were fantastic together. Nicole Scherzinger. And now Ryan. Marco, you remember now? With the, the, yeah, bright, the sound of silence, room. right? Those moments. Oh, there are so many we could spend, you know. Emmett Smith. Hours. Yeah. One of my favorites was, was Marley Matlin, oh. you know? Oh. And like, it was like right at the beginning. Well, at the beginning. Oh, <laughs> I always on the show. <laughs> yeah, um, 
But yeah, that was incredible. And then obviously, you know, that has been extended. There's been so many, so many people that have come on the show that like never thought that there was a possibility for them to be a dancer or Amy, you know, and like, I remember Derek talking about it um, on the show, but also just per privately with me, just like Amy talking about how, you know, she never felt sexy as a woman because, you know, she was a snowboarder when she lost her legs and then like to be on this dance floor feel, feeling like this feminine, beautiful woman dancing and moving her hips. And like, it's just like, those are the moments that stand out to me. I'm very much like Carrie Ann. Like I get so emotional. I, I'm so invested in the journey of like, the person feeling like their best, most like express selves get to come free, come through and like people get to witness them, you know? And like, so- They it, come out of the shells. Oh, They're it's just amazing. It was, well, it's, actually, it's, actually, it's also, also I was going to say real fast too. Also, if you look back to just the progress of the show, the pro it's funny when you look back at the earlier seasons and you're like, wow, this show has come a long way. You know, just in the, the, the production, the lighting, the attention to detail, but also the wardrobe, but also the, the dancing itself. The dancing has just, it's, it's improved so much. And, and one thing, though, for me that's really important, at least even more so now, and the one thing that we all respected and we loved about Len so much was his, about bringing the history of dance and, and bringing that with us and never forgetting the history of dance and never, and never like losing sight of the foundation and the structure of these, of these dance styles that are so dear to us. And I think that we, it, it's evolved so much, but um, to, to honor him in a way that is, you know, keeping ballroom and keeping Latin kind of at the foundation of what it is, um, still being able to elaborate and to, to experiment and to do things, but to never forget the fundamentals. Um, but to see how far the show has, has gone and where it is now is is it's so amazing. It really is incredible to watch. Yeah, you're absolutely right, there, because in fact, you know, you remember when you know Jenna and Jojo did the Argentine Tango, which yeah. was to me one of the most brilliant performances, and it was so now so right for the time we are living. But at the same time, you always knew it was an Argentine Tango. It was a pure Argentine tango, the interpretation and the way it was choreographed was absolutely right and for our time. Yes, and yes. And things like that, because you can do, you can still respect the essence of the dance, but then yes. you move it and you, your interpretation of it is relevant to the time we are living now. And it's not, it's not easy to do, you know, because you do it all the time, but it's yeah. not easy. Yeah, well, and, and it's actually it's actually interesting. The, this off season, if you will, I've actually been taking um, I've been taking a lot of lessons. Actually, I've been I've been being coached myself from 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 uh, you know people in the ballroom world that are currently competing, you know, in waltz and tangos and things, and yeah. learning where where it is now. So then I'm able to sort of articulate it in a way yeah. that is. Um, that is, it is current, but still, but still traditional, and still at the at the core of what it is. Because I, I truly want to honor again. I really, truly want to honor um, our dear, our dear friend. So, um, so I've took it upon my, you know, to to really, yeah, to to, to gain more knowledge, oh. even more, even more now. Yeah. So, yeah. you're gonna say something, George? Go ahead, bud. I, I was, I, I'm waiting. I, I see Alfonso. I feel like he's got ten couples that he's loved watching over the years. And he's oh, been yes. so far, so I still want that answer out of you. And you can't say yourself. Well, I you know because <laughs> I didn't get to watch me, it, but uh, no, what, uh, you were great, my friend. Yeah, you were. <laughs> what I truly love about the show is the fact that I think we're all saying the same thing in terms of what we love, right? And it's the heart. It's how these couples make us feel. Right. What was incredible about watching Iman Shumpel, right, was the fact that in the beginning of his season, he was in the bottom yeah. three out of the first five weeks. And to see someone go from not being in it, not really caring that much until that competitive dude showed up and said, no, 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 I'm not going home early. He applied himself, not just physically, but emotionally, and then he his season just took off from there, right? Um, last season, 
I think I cried twice with Selma, right? Like seeing her go through that journey and something that I saw that I don't think a lot of people or there's really no medical, you know, anything that, that is medically actually sound in what I'm about to say, but she would have her episodes is what she would call them, where her body would just stop working. That happened often in the beginning of the season. And every week it happened less. And for me, with the way that I kept seeing that was like, this dance is physically helping her deal with how not to have one of her episodes. And it, and it literally broke my heart when she had to, to kind of you know, bow out. But watching her do that was incredible. Watching her go through that was incredible. Having all of us sit through that and be able to be part of it was incredible. Watching um, Jordan Fisher, right, um, years ago, uh, to me, probably the best male celebrity dancer on the show in its history. Just so good. Always rock solid, right? But it's so many different factors. I think what Carrie Ann was saying earlier, like, you know, well, who's your favorite? For what? For the journey? Which one is it? Because it's because they're all separate. They're all different. And what's beautiful to watch is seeing at the beginning of the season, you've got 13 different journeys. If it's 13, sometimes it's 11, sometimes it's 15, who knows? <laughs> but seeing it and going, here we are at the start line, right? And we're going to go in 13 different directions. And getting to watch that each year um, is, I think, what makes it spectacular. But, but my my you know my all time favorite um, is 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love is, a good I, I love a good wardrobe malfunction, and I think the best one in my memory was season one with Kelly Monaco and her strap right. broke, and the faces that uh, Bruno and Carrie Ann gave. <laughs> back then were, oh my gosh, but they were so pleased that she pivoted and kept on dancing, right? What Very has fun. been your favorite wardrobe malfunction? Anyone? That one. Because <laughs> that, you know, that was so good because of the fact that it taught everybody. Dance is not being in your head. Dance is about being in your body. And what was going on with Kelly is she was overthinking things and that freezes up your body. Right. So dance can be healing, as we just talked about, about Selma, what you were talking about, Alfonso. And I think what was so fascinating about watching Kelly go through that moment is she forgot her fears and she she clung on to her breast for dear life to keep that booby top on. <laughs> and she danced her heart out and then something new came out. And I really think that that season, that first season really was so amazing because it really set a lot of. Um, standards, like for instance, having Evander Holyfield on the show, right, really gave permission to men like masculine yeah. footballers to come out and play with Dancing with the Stars, right, and show them yeah, that yeah. Dancing with the Stars is a sport as well. And I just, I don't know, season one was just fantastic, but wardrobe malfunctions, Kelly Monaco was by far the most <laughs> impactful one. So this next question comes from our official sponsor, City. What do you think fans find most surprising when it comes to the behind the scenes moments between the choreography, the costumes, and the constant rehearsals? Who'd like to take that? Raise Friendship. your hand. Friendship. Oh man. Alfonso. Friendships that, that come out of this journey. I don't think people realize how close you get to not just your partners, but your competitors. Um, my season, we had movie nights at my house with all the competitors. We would all just come over, we'd sit down and we'd hang out and watch a movie. And it was it, the friendships. I still go and see if I'm driving in my RV, I go see Sadie Robertson in West Monroe, Louisiana. Okay. <laughs> you were you know, not invited. I'm furious. My <laughs> house for thank you, right? Like, every, like, everyone's always invited and to come to my house for Thanksgiving. These are the things I think that people don't realize the kind of friendships, the true organic, real friendships that occur during, during, you know, this show. I mean, uh, Emma Slater is not, was not my dance partner, 
But yet for the last three months, I've been taking dance class with her, right? And just being in the ballroom with her and being nice. just, there's so many wonderful friendships. I'm excited about next Saturday, which when this airs, it would be, it already happened. But, you know, going to one of our brother's wedding, like that to uh. me, it, the, those kinds of friendships, that's, that, that's what people don't really realize until they get there and they're on the show and they're doing it and they're creating these friendships that last forever. Well, we won't talk, oh, go ahead, Julian. Oh no, I was gonna say, and to add to that, Alfonso, it's like, okay. there's such a sense of belonging. And I think that through, through the the pandemic, this that was the last time, you know, we were on ABC. It's like, um, to be back in, in this new way, I feel like even our audience, the people that are so invested in this show, not only are they going to see the friendships being made, but there's a sense of belonging and togetherness that I think we're going to recreate. And after everything that we've gone through, strikes happen and all over. It's like finding your people, finding your belonging, finding your communities, like finding the thing that makes you feel like you're having a shared experience. I think that's what people as humans crave more than anything. And I cannot tell you that Dancing with the Stars is the perfect, most like, you know, it, it wraps up exactly what people need. It's fun, it's energetic, it's exciting. It takes you on a journey and it makes you feel like you belong. And it's just this like beautiful family, whether it's inside or watching or witnessing, there's no separating. It's just, we're all family. And like- I'm, that I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, cause George, you said about what's behind the scenes that people might know it. Afonso said friendship. I'm gonna go the other route. I'm yeah. gonna go the, uh, I'm gonna go the other route. I'm gonna go in earlier seasons, the competitiveness, <laughs> the competitiveness, the rivals, the drama. It was just that was, you. That was just <laughs> a lot of the pros. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was just me. Oh, uh, there. That was just you. <laughs> no, I will. I, honestly, it's 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 funny because because it's so it's interesting, and I look back at like earlier seasons, especially. And because, you know, we were straight out of the, the Latin ballroom world where we were very competitive. It was all about, like, it's all about, like, you. Like, like we, I must be the best. And I must. So we were, like, the amount of competitiveness and the rivalries and the pros. things like that. The things, Not the celebrities, the pros. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, no, no but, 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 but this, is what, this is what I mean, though. This is, what I, this is what I, again, I love about this because I look back at those moments, those times, which are very important. It was very exciting and very fun and, we're, you know, but very competitive. Um, and by the way, yes, between the celebrities as well. Trust me. There's, there's, there's a lot of... <laughs> There's a lot of competitiveness. I know. I, listen, there's a, that's what's also great about the show is that at the end of the day, there is this. No, no, you need. And by the way, and that's not a bad thing. I'm saying yeah. that's very important. But I will say what's been beautiful to see is the evolution of camar camaraderie of where it, it does feel more like it's still competitive. Don't get me wrong. And people still want to win. And people still are like, oh, man, what? You know, there's still that emotion. And if, if there isn't that emotion, then there isn't that competitiveness. And that's really what's also beautiful about the show. Because I think sometimes we're made to believe that competition is not a good thing, when in actuality, competition is a great thing. It really brings the best out in us. And sometimes the worst. But <laughs> I think um, <laughs> but I think that, like, it's been, it's been really beautiful to see firsthand where it can almost be um, – almost like a, a, a almost like a negative sense of competitiveness in a way behind the scenes a little bit and i'll be honest with you but then evolve into a beautiful support of competitiveness where you can still compete you can still go strong you can still want to win you can still be want to be the best but you could do it in a way that is actually supportive and uh it's been cool to see that evolution as well so i just wanted to get that out there too because um yeah <laughs> all right before, 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 we run out, before we run out of time I want to say one thing I love about the show is that I think everyone in the studio audience is rooting for that couple to do great when they're performing on live television. And that's something I feel nowhere else in television. I don't want to talk about the season 32 cast because we'll be talking to them every week for weeks. But I want to talk about the casting, Conrad, because with the exception of a handful of people that I couldn't wait to see get out the door, I have loved a lot of people that I never expected to. Little Kim is somebody that 
I didn't know anything about. I loved her by the time she left. There are many people like that. What is it in casting that makes you say, uh, 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 and you move on? Because you do have a tendency to bring us people that we want to root for. And sometimes 12 people at once. Well, a, a lot. the props for casting goes to Dina Katz, who's not on this um, panel, but is the maestro behind the casting from, from the very first season. Um, wow. You know, we one thing we look for is passion in the people taking part. It really helps if people want to do it. It doesn't mean they have to be a good dancer. It means they have to want to take the trip. They right. want to invest. You know, I think where it gets... Um, it gets less exciting to watch if you think someone's phoning it in or not that bothered. So we're yeah. always kind of looking for that. We also look to, we want to try and get as many different people on that dance floor as possible. We want to show that dancing is something everyone can do. You know, the great thing about having the audience as the leveling factor in this is that if someone's not technically the best dancer, the audience can boost them along. And I think that's perfectly valid because we can't get everyone with the same technical ability. So we're always trying to make it a very broad camp. We're always trying to show that different people can have access to lifts of different ages, of different physical abilities, you know, and different performance styles, right? Some people are very good comic performers, even if they're not doing the steps right, and they're much more fun than someone who's technically good. So we're always sort of keeping an eye out for getting that range and balance and commitment. Um, but, you know, I have to say that the real skill on this is Dina's, and she's been incredible at pulling out so many brilliant cast because we've had like literally hundreds of celebrities have taken part in the show now it's kind of amazing that's one of the great things about having been on air for as long as we have and as Julianne was saying how people have grown on the show and you're sort of getting the next generation of people coming through the show and I feel like the audience feels a connection to it for that reason you know I think it's yeah. really nice for people to have some of these shows that have been around long enough that you can feel part of the history of it. Things that can draw the country together a bit at a time when everything feels so divided and difficult at the moment. These are the kind of unifying experiences that remind us all that we've all got a lot more in common than we have as differences, really. You know, we're yeah. all rooting for people to do well, ultimately, and it's a very positive feeling for us. Yeah, you know, Thank you, I like... I just want to say something like I'm from a world arts and cultures background, which is like studying dance and movement as part of culture. And dance is the universal language to Conrad's point. That's what brings us together. It is healing. It is about expressing what's inside. It's expressing the things that we can't express in words. And I think there's a lot of that in the world right now. This is such an important season. We want to just get out there and make everybody feel safe, happy, enjoy and have be like and I want everybody to feel inspired because that's what our show really does. It's about the beauty of the human spirit, overcoming and like bringing joy, so. I think those are great words to end on unless anyone on the panel thinks they can top that. <laughs> I think she said that together. <laughs> you know. She said it beautifully. So that is all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank executive producer and showrunner Conrad Green for joining us, our co-host Julianne Huff and Alfonso Ribeiro. And I wanna say thank you to our judges, including Carrie Ann Anaba and Bruno Tonioli, who've been here from the very beginning, and then the most winning of all the professional dancers, turn judge, Derek Cuff, also joining us today. Thank you, Derek. We want to thank City for their support for this Paley Fest Fall TV preview special, and you can enjoy more of these programs by clicking on the button below. I think you guys can all see that look down. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you don't want to miss the new season of Dancing with the Stars. Whoa. You'll see it on ABC and on Disney Plus simulcasting. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon for season 32 of Dancing with the Stars. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, brother.